Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about nine myths surrounding guinea pigs. So I hope you enjoy this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can see more animal videos. Before we get started with today's video, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Amino. Amino is an app that is available for iPhone and Android users and is a place where you can find people with the same interests as you. Whether you are looking for a group of people to talk to about a certain TV show or you're looking for a group of pet owners, you can find it all on Amino. I joined the Amino group called Guinea Pigs and there are always people online chatting, sharing photos of their guinea pigs and giving friendly advice. It's a great group to get to talk to other guinea pig owners, learn more about how to care for your pets, and just share your love of guinea pigs. People post their drawings of their guinea pigs, do cage tours, and post fun quizzes and polls. What's really nice about it is that everyone is friendly and easy to talk to. You can go on there to chat with me and share photos of your guinea pigs with me. I will also be posting on there as well. And if you're on Amino, let me know down below in the comments which groups you would like for me to join. So the first myth is you cannot bathe a guinea pig. Actually, you can bathe a guinea pig. It's more of a question of should you bathe your guinea pig. So you don't want to be bathing your guinea pig very often. And by often, I mean once or twice a year is pretty much the max. Instead, you should try to clean your guinea pig using a soft brush or even a damp towel. You should only try to bathe them if they really are dirty, if there's been some sort of accident, um, if you're getting a new guinea pig that just you know came really dirty. And by that, I mean like physically, there's poop and bedding and stuff stuck to their fur. Um, I did do a demonstration on how to safely bathe your guinea pigs, so I will link that down below in the comments. Guinea pigs can eat broccoli and cauliflower. Cauliflower and broccoli have a lot of health benefits that can be added to your guinea pig's diet. They are safe for them to eat, however, they should be fed in moderation, only once a week and small amounts. The leaves of cauliflower can be fed more often though. Feeding too much broccoli can cause bladder stones, but both broccoli and cauliflower are packed with vitamin C, so it's actually a great vegetable to add to their diet. Just don't feed too much because both of them can cause bloating, so you may want to alternate between the two. Guinea pigs can be kept in glass aquariums. So besides the fact that a glass aquarium is way too small for a guinea pig, um, they are not safe for guinea pigs because they can cause for them to have respiratory infections and other respiratory illnesses. And this is because guinea pigs do pee and poop a lot, so they need a well-ventilated cage. An aquarium is probably the worst idea for a guinea pig cage. Guinea pig cages from the pet store are the perfect size. A pair of guinea pigs require a seven and a half square foot area of space. Now, very, very few guinea pig cages from the stores, from pet stores, are actually going to meet those requirements. And when you compare the cost of the cage versus getting a CNC cage, either building it yourself or getting one from the guinea pig cage store, it actually comes out more cost effective to go ahead and buy one of these cages. Now, of course, you can spend a lot more on this cage, especially getting all the extra add-ons and everything like that, but just for a basic cage with a loft, uh, the price is going to be pretty good compared to getting um, a guinea pig cage from like a pet store that's actually smaller. So you get more room, a better cage for them, and it's, it's more cost effective. CNC cages are also so much easier to clean. It's a lot easier to interact with your guinea pig because you're able to reach them easier, you're able to interact with them. And so I just recommend getting a CNC cage. Um, it's a lot better. Guinea pigs can be kept on sawdust. So I was one of those people that thought that sawdust and wood shavings were the same thing. They're not. <laughs> uh, the entire time I was using wood shavings, I just thought that they were called sawdust. Uh, so it's totally two different things. Sawdust is like it sounds it would be. Um, it's wood that's very fine dust. Uh, that's not suitable for any animal. Wood shavings does work for animals. However, you want to make sure you're getting one that's safe for your guinea pig. So cedar and pine have been treated with chemicals that cause illness in small animals. 
So you wanna go with something like Aspen that's actually safe for them to be on. Guinea pigs must use a water bottle. So this is kind of an endless debate going on in the community where some people prefer water bottles, some people prefer water bowls. Personally, I really think that you need to pick the one that works best for you and your pet. I do, however, recommend bowls. I think that's a lot better for animals because they are less likely to be dehydrated. Also, I do not use a water bottle with my two guinea pigs because they have broken every single water bottle I've ever tried to use with them. And I've gone through every brand that I could get access to. They just broke it within a few days. So it's been a lot more successful for me to use a water bowl. Guinea pigs only need pellets. Uh, so this is not true. Uh, pellets should be a small part of a guinea pig's diet. That is not going to make up their overall diet. So it's actually one of the smaller parts. Uh, the majority of their diet should be hay, timothy hay or another grass hay like that. That's mainly what they should be eating. Um, guinea pigs eat a lot of hay, by the way, too. Um, in size comparison to the like how big they are to the amount of hay that they eat, they eat more hay than any of my other animals, and that's comparing them to llamas, horses, rabbits, uh, chinchillas. They just eat a ton of hay. Uh, but that's good. That's what they're supposed to be eating. Uh, then pellets is going to be a small part of their diet. And then they also need vegetables. And that's going to actually be more, more than pellets. They're going to be eating more vegetables than they're going to be eating of pellets. So pellets are just a small thing for them. Hay and veggies is their main diet. Guinea pigs can live with rabbits and chinchillas and other animals. No, uh, the only animals that are suited for living with guinea pigs are guinea pigs. Those are the only animals that are the correct companions for them, is their own kind. Uh, so rabbits, rabbits are not a good option to have with your guinea pig because rabbits are a lot bigger, they're stronger, it's very easy for them to injure a guinea pig. As for chinchillas, chinchillas require very different care, a totally different diet. Uh, they also require a totally different cage setup. This would not work for a chinchilla. Uh, so I don't know why anybody would want to try to put those two animals together. No, it's not going to work. Just don't uh, try to put your guinea pigs with any other animals. House them with other guinea pigs. Guinea pigs are happy alone. To be honest, the only people that say their guinea pig is happy alone are people that have no experience interpreting animal behavior. So they have no right to say whether the animal is happy or sad. These are the type of people that have only ever owned one guinea pig. They did zero research and bought a guinea pig without knowing anything about it. And asking a 17 year old pet store employee that doesn't even own a dog does not count as research. So your guinea pig is not happy alone. Your guinea pig is an animal with a survival instinct that will continue to eat and live because that's what animals do. The animal being alive is not a sign of good care. Companionship is a care requirement for guinea pigs. I'll never be able to say that enough. The comments will have tons of people giving all kinds of excuses as to why their herd animal doesn't need a herd. You can use science all day long to back up this argument, but some people think that their own uninformed opinion is more valid. You can see that this is a sore topic for me because as a YouTuber, one of the things that makes me the most angry is the excuses that people give to not take care of their pets. Um, there is absolutely no reliable source out there that is going to tell you that it's okay to have a guinea pig by itself. Um, I welcome you guys to put that down in the comments if you're gonna put why your guinea pig you know, is fine being alone, why it's perfectly happy, why it hates other guinea pigs, be sure to put a reliable link on your comment. None of this, oh, it's my opinion. Let's see an actual source. Herd animals need to be with herds. Uh, it's, it's just science. Um, there is an evolutionary feature inside of their brain that pre-programs them to want this. And I will link more videos down below where I go into further detail about this, but basically, they're a herd animal, their brain is telling them that if they're by themselves, they're in danger. So uh, you can fight nature all you want, but at the end of the day, a guinea pig needs to be housed with another guinea pig. I, I just hate that I have to go on this one so long, but um, yeah, you'll, you'll never, 
You'll always see in the comments somebody explaining why their guinea pig is by itself. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.